All right, guys, today we're going to look at how I set up triggers to run large scale events with multiple players where I'm typically either playing as the game master or, you know, just at least stepping back from my role as a, as a player and sort of managing the fight. Now, the traditional way, of course, is to set up a trigger. If somebody rolls through the trigger, then it causes something to activate or something to happen. I don't like that necessarily, uh, depending on a situation, because I might want to control the, the chaos that's happening. I, I want to, uh, you know, like a rheostat. And uh, if it's a little bit too cold, I want to turn up the heat. Or if it's getting a little too hot, I want to turn it down. So I'd like to control when things activate uh, and I can sort of change the environment. So right now what we've got is just our, our enemy, you know, whatever it is. We've got a, a, a grad site out here. I'm going to add some more stuff that I can control when it appears uh, to affect how the players are experiencing the scenario. So I'm going to go up here, first of all, and just throw something in. we got a SAM battery. I'm just going to drop an SA6 battery here and I'm going to name it. Uh, SAM site. And it's important that we name this. It's important that we hit late activation, otherwise it's not going to work. We, we we can leave it whatever name it is, but we just need to know what it is because we're going to reference it later. And it, the more you do this, the more you're going to want a very specific name. So we've done that. And then what I want to do is throw in some jets. Give them some waypoints. Same deal. Late activation. And we're going to call this App North. All right. So that's the easy part. These are the things that we want to spawn in later uh, to control the, the flow of the game. Now, what I'm going to do is go over here to the battlefield commanders. I want to make sure that I've got everything selected. You don't need to do it necessarily this way. I just do this that way. I've got uh, a backdoor into everything. You can set passwords if you want down here and you can set pilot control vehicles. I believe this is just a combined arms function. Uh, but you can do what I'm about to show you, the trigger stuff, with and without combined arms. So let's just jump into that. All right, so before we can set up our triggers, what we need to do is set up the units by which we will be controlling these triggers. So the first method I use, uh, again, is combined arms. I'm going to change this to ground command. And I'm just going to put a uh, Humvee here. Find it, scout Humvee. All right, and I'm going to set that that player can drive. Uh, everything else should be good. You can set it to Game Master only, uh, whichever you want to do. Uh, but I'm just going to put that Humvee there. And then for you uh, non uh, combined arms players, I'm going to put Command UE. You can put any aircraft that you want. Anything that you own obviously makes sense. And obviously set that to client. I'm going to put him on the ground, hot. And I've given him a name, Command Huey. And it's something I own, I can jump into. And you can set a password there again if you're worried about somebody coming in and uh, taking it from you. All right, so we've got the vehicles by which we will use these radio commands. because That's essentially what we're going to do. Now we're going to create the triggers. All right, so once we've created these, now we're going to actually create the trigger zone that they're inside. And this is going to make everything appear. So we're going to create a trigger zone. I'm going to change the size to 1,000. I'm going to put it right on top of where those guys are going to spawn in. And I'm just going to call this command... And you can call it whatever you want, misspell it however you want. All right, so we've got our command trigger. Our vehicles are inside that zone. Now let's actually create the triggers that will happen. We'll go up here to the triggers, create new. We're going to call it radio ground. And what happens when this trigger, uh, what, what conditions cause it to happen? We're going to hit new. We're going to put all of group in zone. We're going to change this to ground command inside the command trigger. So this trigger is going to occur when this condition, which is the ground command unit is inside of that command trigger. And what happens? Well, we're going to create some radio messages. So let's go radio item add for group, which group and ground. What's it called? We're going to call this cap North. Remember that's what we called the MIGs. I'm just going to change this flag to 10. It doesn't matter what you put. You just, whatever number you put there, is going to be specific for that cap unit, for that MIG unit. We're just going to change the value to two. Uh, this is just the way that I do. You play around with the numbers however it makes sense to you in your brain. All right, so radio item, cap north, flag 10, value two. I'm going to clone this, and I'm going to change this to SAM site. I'm going to change the flag 20 and keep the value at two. All right, so these items are going to appear in your radio or this one single unit ground commands and it's going to be called sam site it's going to be called cap north and it's going to change these flags which you won't see in game you only see here 
All right, so I'm going to copy this. I'm going to clone it, and I'm going to call this Radio Huey. And I just need to clean this up. So we're talking about the Huey, so I'm going to put Command Huey in the trigger. And I'm going to change this to Huey. I'm going to change this to Huey. All right, so same deal. The Huey now has the same items if he spawns inside that trigger. All right. Now there is this function of or I've played with it. It does not work. At least it doesn't work when I do it. So I just create two different triggers just to avoid any sort of confusion. All right. So we've created these messages, but now we have to actually create what those messages do. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to call this app north. All right. So what's going to happen with this trigger? Well, we're going to create what conditions I should say is we're going to change the flag equals. We called cap north flag one or correction flag 10 value two and what is going to happen well it's going to group activate cap north okay so cap north trigger whenever we turn flag 10 into two which we're going to do through those radio commands it's going to activate group north i'm going to clone that again change the name to sam site i'm going to change this flag to 20 because that's what we said for the sam site and we're going to make sure that it activates sam site all right, so we should have four different things here. Let's test it out and see if it actually works. All right, so first thing I'm going to do is jump into uh, the Game Master role just so we can see everything on the map. So we see the units that we had pl plopped down on the ground. We've got the ground vehicle, but we don't have the MiGs. We have this some other stuff, but we don't have the MiGs, and we don't have the SAM site. So go ahead and inhabit the vehicle. So we select the vehicle. We go up here. Again, this is a combined arms function. We're going to select this little uh, tank icon up here. And now we're actually in the spot. So I'm going to bring up the radio menu and we can see F10 other. I'm going to, I'm going to activate cap North. I'm going to click that. I'm going to go back to the F10 map and there's our MIGs just like we had planned. And now they've late activated. So now let's show how do we do it without combined arms. So we're going to select plot. We're going to jump into the Huey. So I'll bring up the radio command, we can see other. I'm going to select SAM site. Of course, we're not going to see this because we're not in game master role anymore. So I'm going to go back to select role just so that we can see it. We'll go back to the game master. And we can see that our SAM site is activated now. We can see that our MIGs are flying around. So that is how we can create these triggers. Now, again, just to review, why are we doing this? If I've got various players out here and I just put triggers out that if they trip into it, something's going to happen, things might spiral out of control. Players are going to do what players are going to do and you can't always control it. In this way, I can decide whether the, the pressure is too much or the pressure is not enough. All right. So for instance, if I've got multiple uh, objectives out here with players hitting them and let's say these guys get done way early and I want to add something for them to do, well, you know, I could spawn in some jets for them to have to fight, or if they're helicopters, I could spawn in some more ground targets for them, or you know, whatever the case may be. So you, you can build all of these different functionalities behind the scenes, and then based on how the ebb and the flow of the battle is going, uh, you can start bringing these items in. And again, you can do it from the cockpit. So let's say that you're the front seat of an Apache, and you've determined that you know your your unit is is ahead of schedule, or so to speak. Uh, you could have these other things built in. You could do the opposite as well. You could set these to deactivate, right? So we could set up a trigger that deactivates these units. Um, you could do that just because the, let's say the pressure is too much or, and I've done this before, let's just say that we're templated that we get some, let's say electronic warfare support. So what I could do is have a window of time that once a unit crosses a trigger or once a unit makes a radio call, that they get this electronic warfare attack that, you know, takes the SAM site out of the fight for 10 minutes or, you know, whatever the case may be. There's different things that we can do, um, different ways you can use. Just got to use your imagination, but now you know how to set up those triggers. Hopefully this was helpful, not too confusing. Just watch it like 30 or 40 times. You'll probably get it down. Uh, but if you have any questions, drop in the comments below. I appreciate you guys watching. We'll see you.